Hey, this is Presh Talwalkar. A square is inscribed in a circle. A smaller square is drawn. The smaller square shares a side with the inscribed square and its other two corners touch the circle. What is the ratio of the large square's area to the small square's area? I found this problem online and the person who shared it said it was asked during a job interview. I gave it a try and I could not figure it out. But it's an interesting problem and I thought to share it because perhaps you could solve it. So can you figure it out? Give this problem a try and when you're ready keep watching the video for the solution. Let's first focus on the inscribed square. We'll draw a diameter of the circle that's equal to two times the radius that connects two corners of the square. The sides of the square and the diameter form an isosceles right triangle. So we can solve for the large square side length as equaling 2r divided by square root of 2. This simplifies to be r square root of 2. Now let's return to the small square. How can we figure out its side length? We're going to draw a couple of line segments. We'll first draw the radius of the circle with length r to a corner of the small circle. Next, we will drop a perpendicular from the center of the circle to the bottom side of the small square. This will bisect the chord of the small square. So now we need to figure out some lengths of this triangle that we've just drawn. We'll write S for the small square's side length. The other leg of the triangle will be S over 2 because it's equal to half of the small square's side. The remaining length will be half of the larger square's side. This will be r squared of 2 divided by 2. So now we have a right triangle and we know all of the lengths. So let's just focus on this triangle. We're going to use the Pythagorean theorem. We have the sum of the squares of the lengths of the legs will be equal to the square of the hypotenuse. We can simplify this equation, and we know that r is an unknown constant, so we'll treat this as a polynomial in s. We'll multiply this by 4, and now we have a quadratic in s. And if you think creatively, you can actually factor this out. So we have two different terms, and the product of them will be equal to 0. So one of these terms, or both of them, have to be equal to 0. So we end up with two possible solutions. s is equal to r square root of 2 divided by 5, or s is equal to negative r times the square root of 2. The problem with the second solution is that that would lead to a negative number for s. And we know that s has to be a positive number because it's a side length. So we can exclude this second solution. So we've now figured out s in terms of r. So now, let's return to our main diagram. So now let's just focus on the two things we figured out. We figured out the length of the large square side, and we figured out the length of the small square side, and both of these are in terms of the radius r. If you compare these two numbers, we'll see that the large square side length is five times as large as the smaller square side length. Since area is proportional to side length squared, we can then conclude the large square's area is equal to 5 squared, which equals 25 times as large as the small square. And that's our answer. The large square is 25 times larger than the small square. Did you figure it out? Thanks for watching this video. Please subscribe to my channel. I make videos on math and game theory. You can catch me on my blog, Mind Your Decisions, which you can follow on Facebook, Google+, and Patreon. You can catch me on social media at Press Talwalker. And if you like this video, please check out my books. There are links in the video description.